Okay, so the our next speaker is Jussi Enkovare. So I have already made a couple of links to the CFC during my presentation of the, on the very first one. So um, <clears throat> she will tell about the uh, about the real computers. So he is originally from uh, from actually at that time that used to be TKK. So to those of you who is at Alto and don't know the history, so here is the kind of history lesson for you. So Alto was organized in 2010, but before that that was TKK and. Uh, uh, along, uh, you see, as myself, we got also the PhD from the Laboratory of Physics under the supervising of the great professors like Marty Puska and Aristo Nieminen at that time. So, if this name tells you something, then. <laughs> and nowadays, you uh, uh, is working for CAC, uh, specialist in scientific computing or specialist in HPC computing in general. He was also helping us at some point. And uh, nowadays, I mean, he's a really experienced guy. If you have some about anything with respect to the HPC, then you'd better ask definitely him and use your opportunity. So you see the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Ivan. So let me share my screen so you can hopefully see my my slides now um, as Ivan told I I come originally from uh, from outdoor as said Helsinki University of Technology uh, background in uh, I did my PhD in atomic scale quantum mechanical simulations uh, got a bit involved in programming at that point uh, and I have been working at CSC almost 16 years now and I, I work with, with very many different kinds of supercomputers. Uh, so within this presentation I tell you a bit about uh, what kind of services uh, CSC provides for researchers. Um, of course we, we have the supercomputers so I talk a bit about them but there are also some some other services that might be might be useful for you in addition to just the, just the computers. Um, for the questions, etc., I think we use the same HECMD as, as previously. And actually to start with, I would uh, I put a couple of questions there. So you hopefully see the short both there. And uh, uh, there are quite a bit of slides uh, which you can, uh, of course, you can access all of them. I might not be able to go through all of them, so especially this, uh, so just spend more time in technical details or data management services. That's that would be interesting to know. And of course, generally, it would be nice to know whether you have used CSC services or maybe some some cluster in uh, FGCI. And let's just wait a couple of seconds still to get the uh, uh, bar. Uh, this uh, actually quite cool, cool idea using the HackMD as a sort of bar graph like this one. Okay, I think that's probably enough. Uh, um, I think I'm not going to do to details how to actually submit the patch job in this presentation. Uh, uh, I think that's something that will be uh, will be discussed more in the in the other sessions. Just maybe mention already this point that the way you use Triton or many of other other clusters in FGC is actually very similar to the CSC, so in that way the transition is is quite smooth. Uh, for those of uh, quite a few of you who say that uh, you haven't used CSC services, actually, I 100 or oh, let's say I'm 99 percent sure that most of you have actually used CSC services without knowing that maybe not the computing services. So. I'll discuss also a bit of the other things. Uh, but uh, 
uh, as I said, here is the brief outline. What is uh, what is CSC? Then um, I think uh, there was in interest also about the data management services. So I try to uh, spend some time on them, and then of course some support services, and finally briefly that how you actually can get started uh, using. Uh, maybe more with the computing services for this last point. Uh, those of you who are not uh, familiar at CSC at all, uh, we are in principle a private company owned by state, the Finnish Minister of Education, uh, with the 70% of share, and then all the Finnish higher education institutes, meaning universities, and, and the polytechnics with the 30% share. And even though we are sort of a company, we are, we are specific, a special company as this is, uh, we are not making any profits, so we are a non-profit company. And task of CSC is to provide uh, various IT-related services uh, for science and, and education. Uh, where supercomputers are just well, one part of that. Uh, most of us, in normal times, of course, now everybody is uh, more or less remotely. We are in uh, Keilan, the MSO, uh, quite close to close to Otamini campus. Uh, and then we have the data center where the supercomputers are in, in Kajani. And nowadays we are more or less uh, 500, I think, with the summer students starting now, I, I guess we, we go uh, above 500 people. Uh, Probably one of the most important things things for you to know is that uh, most of the services uh, CSC provides for individual researchers, they are actually free of charge. And really meaning that you do not need to pay any money for that. Of course, somebody needs to pay for this money. Basically, it's a Ministry of Education and Culture. They have made the agreement uh, that the most services are something that the researchers or even the university uh, do not need to pay anything for them. Uh, there are some uh, sort of uh, limitations what can be done. So if there is some commercial usage of services, uh, if you're doing R&D together with some companies where the research is necessarily not, uh, not public, then this might not be really free of charge. Uh, you can find a bit more in our web pages about these more special cases, but uh, I guess it's for most of this audience, if you want to use CSC services, if you want to use the supercomputers, uh, it doesn't cost you any money directly. Uh, as I say that uh, most of you actually I, I think have been using CSC services. So if you ever used the uh, internet at the University of Campus, uh, CSC is operating the Fundet network between the universities. Uh, if you ever used Eduron Wireless in anywhere, that's in principle also service provided by CSC. Or CSC is, is sort of uh, contributing to service. And also many uh, student administration systems and so on. CSC is actually doing work also, also there. So I think if you go to Opintopolku, etc., many of these, these systems, CSC is actually somehow underneath there. If you use Hakka authentication, uh, that's in principle also a service where uh, you are implicitly using, using CSC. Uh, but for this presentation, I'm mainly focusing now on these uh, uh, computing and, and software, uh, a bit about the data management. And uh, let's see if I can uh, uh, data management and then a bit about the support and uh, for, for training, etc. Et um, customers, uh, main customer segment is, is researchers in, in universities and also in state research institutes. 
then some something more for the education and then uh, some government organizations, for example, the audiovisual uh, archive, uh, Finnish National Library and so on, they are also using some of our, our services. Okay. Um, and yeah, then maybe also mention that uh, uh, you will sort of, uh, we will be providing uh, or you can get support uh, in many different phases of, of the research. So starting from the planning of the research project uh, to actually running the simulations in our supercomputers, maybe analyzing the data and then finally uh, sharing and, and publishing some of the data sets. Okay. Let's see, somehow I managed to get this annotation there. Let's see if I can just clear the drawing. Yeah, looks a bit nicer now. Uh, maybe also some sort of things that uh, are done now super can give a bit more perspective. So there are nowadays, there are many different types of scientific problems that can can benefit from uh, supercomputers and, and the kind of infrastructure that CSC provides. Uh, there, there are of course the very large scale simulations where you need hundreds or thousands of uh, CPU cores to perform the simulations, which are really the, the big ones that uh, you, you don't have any uh, similar resources in, in anywhere else in, in Finland, at least. Uh, then there might be some uh, a bit uh, smaller scale simulations where the number of CPU cores for individual simulations might not be that large, but you want to run lots of them. Uh, many of the data analysis tasks, uh, machine learning and so on, uh, they in, sometimes can, can benefit from CSC services and maybe a bit more, more special case and I don't know how relevant for, for these audiences, but uh, uh, for science uh, dealing with, with sensitive data. So for example, some biomedical research with the patient data, et cetera, uh, there are special services for, for handling this, uh, this sensitive data. And as a sort of new, new type of services for uh, also for experiments where a large amount of data is, is generated. So you might have some satellite or big uh, physics uh, experimental apparatus that, uh, that produces a huge amount of data. And these can be uh, in some cases uh, semi-automatically transferred to CSC. Uh, storage and then analyzed with our, our supercomputers. A uh, couple of examples uh, of, of research that has been done and published in our supercomputers. Uh, uh, different uh, machine learning based methods, they are in, in many areas, they are very important. So there was uh, some publications done by Pekka Rusvori. Novades is actually, I think, in University of Turku, where they used CSC computers for uh, making diagnoses for, for cancer. Uh, um, for sort of coupling different length scales and different types of simulations, uh, many climate research is, is a good example. So there was from uh, uh, Professor Mariko Kulmal in University of Helsinki, they have used lots of CSC services for studying uh, atmospheric feedback mechanisms. Uh, very timely example, I think, is uh, that was studied in about, uh, about a year ago, is uh, studying how aerosol particles spread in air. You might even see in some simulations uh, in, in YouTube and in, in TV. Uh, where supercomputers have been used to study. So uh, how, for example, coronavirus will spread in the, in the area, uh, people inhaling, etc. 
molecular dynamic simulations of a biological CLS and so on. They are some very sort of common common type of simulation. And as maybe illustration that uh, really one big benefit of, of supercomputer is that you somehow you can think that it's a, it's a complex scientific apparatus which seem to resemble in, in many ways the laptop you might have. But in, you can still uh, still think sometimes that it's uh, it, it's a complex scientific apparatus, but it's something that you can with the same same device you can study uh, either the uh, smallest things in in inverse subatomic particles, but then also things in cosmological scale. So here is sort of a type of simulation related to that with the with the gravitational waves and stuff from early universe are studied with the with supercomputers. And this is well, this particular example that was using uh, over 10,000 CPU cores for performing these, these simulations. Uh, here you can see the overview of uh, the CSE infrastructure. So as Ivan already mentioned in his, his presentation, uh, we have two uh, main supercomputers at the moment, Pufti and Mahti. Um, I discuss a bit more details about them in a, in a moment. Uh, both of them have both the CPU partition, uh, so this normal Pufti and Mahti, and then we have uh, also part which has has a GPUs. Uh, so. That's uh, actually in Mahti, that's uh, relatively new. Uh, that was in production only in a, a bit more than one month ago. The so-called Mahti AI and Puhti AI parts. Uh, both of these uh, supercomputers, they have uh, their own uh, disk systems, uh, fast parallel storage uh, for very efficient input and output of massive amounts of data during the simulations. And as a common storage system, uh, between them, there is the uh, ALAS object storage. And uh, nice thing about ALAS is that uh, actually the data that is there, uh, that is also, you can make that directly accessible via, via internet. So in principle, you can uh, access the same data from your laptop or from your uh, from CSE supercomputers, and uh, you can even even sort of uh, get the URL for the for the data set you have there for easy easy sharing between collaborations. Uh, we have also uh, various uh, cloud services. So we have Epota, which is a cloud service for sensitive data. Uh, that actually, if you want to use that, that requires a bit uh, special arrangement because uh, um, specific uh, network connection needs to be made there. Then we have a C Bota, and then we have uh, also uh, Container Cloud. And uh, if the CSC resources are, or let's say the current CSC resources are not enough, you CSC can help you also for getting access to some big supercomputers uh, in Europe via the base research infrastructure. And soon we are getting one of the biggest supercomputers in the world, Lumi, which I'll tell you also a bit more details a little bit later on. Uh, Puhti, um, that's uh, our sort of uh, general workhorse. So it's based on uh, Intel CPUs and it has a range of uh, uh, memory sizes for different types of uh, simulations. Uh, there is also a bit different local storage options. So some of the nodes, they have a faster disk and uh, all the nodes, they're connected with the quite fast interconnect. Uh, and it's really meant for many types of simulations from uh, uh, interactive single core data processing to some simulations which can, uh, can utilize uh, uh, at least hundreds of CPU cores. 
the both the AI part that consists of uh, 80 nodes with uh, NVIDIA uh, P100 GPUs and it's especially for various uh, deep learning frameworks and so on but also HPC codes that can utilize GPUs can can use that and it has a quite large selection of scientific software installed there. Uh, Mahti is really designed for massively parallel uh, simulations so normally the smallest unit that you will be using with Mahti is, is a single node and uh, each node has uh, in total 128 AMD CPU cores so there are two 64 core CPUs within a node uh, Mahti is uh, more homogeneous in a sense that all the nodes they have a uh, same amount of, of memory uh, same type of local disk and I say that's an addition uh, there is now also the part with uh, with GPUs where we have uh, uh, 24 GPU nodes uh, each of them has uh, uh, four NVIDIA uh, A100 GPUs so they are a bit more, more uh, performant than the ones in, in Puhti. Okay, let's check whether you have had any questions. There was one in there was one interesting That's question. What yeah. does what does CSC stand for? <laughs> yeah, nowadays CSC doesn't stand for anything sort of uh, like GNU. It doesn't really. I don't know if it stands. So CSC it, it used to be Center for Scientific Computing, so I think that that where it comes from. Nowadays, I think the official name of company is just uh, CSC IT Center for Science Limited. So. Yeah, that's that's how it how it comes. But yeah, okay. A uh, bit more to the technical details then. So this is pretty much what I already already mentioned. So if you look about the technical specifications uh, that we have in Puhti, uh, so the CPU model that's in the Lexion Gold, uh, you can find the actual model number there. And there are two CPUs uh, per node. Both CPUs have 20 cores and they run with uh, uh, 2.1 uh, gigahertz uh, clock frequency. As I said, there are different uh, memory configurations there. So as you might know, uh, sometimes uh, memory might be even more expensive than the actual CPUs. So uh, when trying to make a compromise for a system that you, you want to get lots of uh, CPU performance, but also support some some cases we really need lots of memory. Uh, you need to sort of uh, make. You cannot have the huge amount of memory for all all the nodes. So most of the nodes they have in total of a uh, bit less than 200 gigabytes of memory, but then there are few with the uh, medium amount, and then. Six six nodes with really 1.5 terabytes of memory. So if you if there is a, a simulation case that uh, some uh, quantum chemistry uh, applications uh, uh, using the wave function based methods might sometimes be uh, example which which really need need lots of memory, there are also available there. Uh, most of the uh, nodes they don't have any local disks there so there is the big uh, uh, parallel uh, disk system that uh, one can use for input and output but there are some cases where you really would like to have a, a higher bandwidth to the disk and there are 40 nodes uh, with this uh, NVMe you can think them as a kind of SSD like disks with uh, uh, 3.2 terabytes per per each node. So if there is a case where you really need to write a lot and read a lot from from disk during the simulation, this can actually give a give a much much better performance. 
uh, and for the GPU nodes, uh, there are these all these GPU nodes. They have the same uh, local fast disks. Also, also there as uh, many machine learning methods might might need that kind of disk access. Uh, the CPUs in in GPU part they are they are just the same as in the in the other part of the system. And as say the GPUs they are the uh, NVIDIA V100. Each GPU has uh, 32 gigabytes of of memory. Uh, the interconnect between the nodes, uh, which you need to uh, transfer the data between nodes, and as uh, Ivan already discussed, you sometimes you can think as uh, as really the uh, heart of the supercomputer in the sense that uh, what uh, what really makes up typically supercomputer is that you have uh, lots of CPUs, lots of CPU cores, and that they are put together via, via this fast interconnect. Uh, for the CPU part, uh, the, the speed of this, uh, this infinite band, that's uh, 100 uh, gigabits per second. And for GPU part, that's uh, that's a 200 uh, gigabits per second. Uh, Mahti? So one question came up in the Putti section. Yeah. So someone asked, as an Alto student, are we supposed to use Triton or can you also try out Putti? And I guess it would depend on being both undergraduate student and a student who's also a researcher. Yeah, I I can actually, I have a one slide at the end bit that, okay, when you would yeah. be using, a, in what kind of cases you might be using a CSC services, okay. what kind of cases, local services, yeah, and also what you need to get access to these services. So I think that will perfect. The Thanks. I think for this purpose of this course, I guess you will be using, and I mean for the more hands-on part, I guess you'll be using mostly Triton. Uh, but uh, uh, I can already say that uh, if you are familiar with using using Triton or any similar cluster, then switching over to CSC should be relatively straightforward. The environment is very similar. Uh, as said, uh, Mahti, that's, uh, uh, that's really meant for large-scale simulations. So uh, in practice, you won't get the, you you won't have the possibility to run anything uh, using the whole Mahti uh, unless in very special circumstances. But in principle, uh, the interconnect and system is designed so that, uh, in in principle, that that would be possible. And I mean that would mean using about uh, one hundred eighty thousand cores in total. So I guess it's number which is uh, which is easy to understand that this is actually actually quite huge i mean in my laptop i have a four cores and here i have almost uh, 50000 times more cores um, as i say they they both are uh, or the uh, cpus min mahti they are they are amd cpus they run a bit higher base frequency uh, 2.6 gigahertz uh, there is some Possible to boost for that in, in simulation and the amount of memory as said that's that's a heterogeneous that constant per per node. Uh, the GPU part, uh, as said, these are the uh, NVIDIA 100 and the infinite band HDR in principle it's very similar to Pufti, but the bandwidth uh, over the whole whole machine is this uh, higher 200. There's actually, it should be not gigabytes, but gigabits per bandwidth. Um, the theoretical peak performance, so how many uh, floating point operations, uh, additions, uh, multiplications, and so on per second, the machine can perform, that's 7.5 petaflops, so 7.5 and then 15 zeros. Uh, maybe to mention at this point and so that, uh, in how to use these systems and if you want to find more information we have the docs.csc.fi which is the main user documentation and uh, if you go here under systems could you uh, zoom in some 
Three. Can you zoom in some? Is it better now? Great. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you can find a bit more details about uh, about the CPUs, both in both in Puhti, in Mahti, actually the. Uh, details of the nodes and the AMD CPUs, they are actually, actually quite, quite complex. There is a deep memory hierarchy there. So uh, if you're interested, you can, you can find more information about that, that here. And Yeah, okay, there is uh, maybe to answer in this technical part also there was this concept of uh, of node that is clear that that was not clear to everybody. Uh, so yeah, the way the supercomputers are nowadays typically build is that uh, of course you have a, a huge number of uh, CPUs and each CPU they can have a lots of CPU cores and then uh, attached to the CPU you always have some some memory some physical memory some some VRAM modules and so on and uh, I guess the main distinction is that uh, within a node uh, all the CPUs so for example if we have uh, uh, two CPUs in in Puhti node both CPUs and all the cores within all CPUs, uh, they share the same memory. So all these, let's say this uh, 190 about uh, gigabytes of memory that we have, uh, we have in Puhti nodes, all this memory is accessible directly to all the CPU cores. So you can just read and write directly to this memory. And then if you want to breach the memory in the other nodes, uh, that cannot be done directly. So that, that will always go uh, via, the, via the interconnect and even more so that uh, you need to use some special communication protocols, some special calls in your, uh, in your parallel program to actually access the memory in, in the other nodes. I hope that this uh, becomes a bit clearer. I mean, if you if you start to use these systems, but that's that's the main distinction. Then within a node, uh, everybody that sits within the node, they they can sort of share the memory, while between the nodes, uh, something a bit more special needs to be done. Uh, about the cloud services. Uh, main distinctions in between or let's say one one benefit of uh, using uh, cc cloud services instead of directly using the supercomputers is that uh, the operating systems that you have in the supercomputer they might be sometimes a bit special or at uh, at least they they are not necessarily the most most recent ones so Stability is very important for these big supercomputers, and also not always all the libraries that you need can be so easily installed there. And there are definitely cases where you might want to have a bit more control um, yourself. Uh, you might need to have uh, admin rights and so on for setting up your simulations, and that's of course not possible in the supercomputers. But then on the other hand, that's something you can do with the, with the cloud services. So uh, of course you have also use it or let's say setting up is necessarily a bit more complicated. So you you need to administrate your own uh, typically Linux system. You you create a virtual machine image and then you can you can sort of use that over over the internet. And as I said, uh, we have a two uh, main uh, variants of these cloud services. We have the uh, CPOTA, which is, you can normally uh, access over internet, and AirPOTA, that's uh, accessible only from special networks. So that's for the sensitive data. And if you don't need uh, full control for the operating system, etc., 
uh, nowadays using uh, containers uh, like uh, Docker or Singularity or things like that is is quite common. So there is also uh, service, practice service available for this kind of use cases. And depending a bit what you actually wanting to do with your within the cloud you can get the different hardware flavors also at csc so uh, you might might get something which is more hpc really oriented you might want something which has gpus or something which has a better uh, io bandwidth for the for the disk access uh, maybe just briefly that okay if you very often you don't really need to do any programming if you're using the supercomputers, uh, whether it's a, a CSC or Triton or a, any other computers in FGCI. If you're just using some existing software, you can you can in many cases use that without uh, really need for parallel programming. But if you need to do that, there are multiple of programming languages supported. Uh, Fortran is still despite the long history quite relevant in in high performance computing in scientific computing then of course c++ uh, python and r ha, uh, have becoming quite quite popular in in recent years julia is something and then for the parallel programming there are the message passing and, and the shared memory programming to open mp they are the most most relevant ones uh, for GPU programming uh, in Mahti and Puhti, uh, there is open ACC, which is sort of uh, maybe something a bit easier to do. And then there is, a, there is a CUDA. Nowadays, actually, also one can use this uh, HIP uh, that Ivan mentioned already, and, and also OpenMP. Uh, for data analytics, uh, machine learning, deep learning, there are various frameworks, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, etc., that are readily installed at CSC and, and you can use it as such. Okay, the, then a few words about the uh, forthcoming monster computer, uh, Lumi. Uh, uh, European Commission had uh, about two years ago a call. Uh, for hosting and maintaining uh, three uh, really big supercomputers, uh, which are uh, aimed to be exascale is something. I mean, CSC current supercomputers, as I said, they have the performance of uh, order of few petaflops. So, with uh, 15 zeros there, and now we are starting to approach the exascale era where the performance is uh, something like order of exascales, uh, exaflops, so one and 18 zeros. And uh, there will be three of these uh, pre exascales, so not really yet the actual exascale, but something that uh, uh, pay way forward that to be built in Europe. And the consortium led by CSC was selected of one of these, so this consortium. Uh, consists of, uh, in addition to Finland, Belgium, Czech, Denmark, Estonia, Norway, Poland, Sweden, and Switzerland. And the machine that uh, we will receive, hopefully by the end of this year, that will have uh, about half Excel of performance, so about 550 petaflops. Um, it will consist of performance is mainly given by GPUs. And this actually, they will be now AMD GPUs. Uh, for you, probably the interesting thing is that 25% uh, of the resources that's dedicated to the Finnish users, that's based on the proportion of uh, funding that uh, Finland put there. Uh, half of the machine is also available to, in principle, any researchers in Europe. So it's it's possible to, apply for access that uh, even outside the consortium members, but uh, Finnish researchers via, via CSC have a possibility to access with, uh, we don't know the exact uh, process procedure yet, how, how that will be carried out. 
probably similar to current so-called grand challenge goals to CSC resources. Um, maybe a few things to mention here that it's it's at the same time it's both huge possibility but it's also challenge so normally supercomputers as any computers they they get old they date and the typical lifetime is five six years and normally when we get the new super supercomputer that's a couple of times more faster than the previous one so for example the Mahdi supercomputer is about four times or the absolute performance is about four times that of our previous computer how now in case of Lumi it will actually be 30 times more performant and there is a really big paradigm shift in a, in a sense that uh, uh, up this point uh, the GPU part in in national supercomputers there have been only uh, some smallest add-on there but now the main part is really for for GPUs and in order to really sort of uh, fully utilize that one also first of all needs to think big in regarding scientific problems and there is also quite a lot of work for making the applications to work efficiently on, on GPUs. Uh, the way one would program for this computer uh, some how it's it's not that different so Fortran and C++ probably the most important language is still with some Python and R usage uh, for parallel program between nodes still the similar uh, NPI approach that used at the moment but then of course we have the program for the actual GPUs and especially the fact that uh, NVIDIA has really been dominating the high performance computing market regarding GPUs for a long time and the software ecosystem has been uh, quite mature there. Now with, the, with AMD there are a bunch of new uh, software frameworks and programming frameworks for uh, programming for these AMD GPUs. So uh, in principle it's a C-like extension to C, C programming language, uh, which in principle should work similarly both in NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. And then there is this uh, bit high level program with OpenMP. And of course, many scientific libraries will take uh, benefit from the, from the GPUs. There was a question, what does pre-XXL mean? Yeah, well, <laughs> it means that it's something it's uh, supposed to be similar to the machines that will reach the actual exascale performance, example of performance, but it doesn't yet have, have exactly that kind of power. So in this case, it means that it's something which is uh, close to exascale, one can think which is uh, where you probably need to use the uh, same programming approaches that you would use for exascale. Something maybe mentioned still uh, illustrate this scale of these machines is that uh, um, I think if one tries to evaluate the power of Lumi in units of uh, modern laptops, uh, I think the pile of these laptops, I mean, if you would put them together, that would be more than 10 kilometers in height. Uh, Lumi, on one hand, that will fit, I think the size, physical size will be about the tennis court with the uh, field with uh, younger people don't necessarily know that what phone boot is but I think the single cabinet that is is the basic building unit that is about the size of phone boot. Okay there was a lot of talk about uh, supercomputers uh, but uh, one thing to keep in mind is that these uh, supercomputers they might generate lots of data 
Uh, and some cases, I mean, even if you're not using the supercomputers, I mean, there is still always uh, data related to research. And the data management, uh, I think that has becoming more and more important. Uh, maybe not relevant yet for the uh, undergraduate students and so on, but for example, when you are making a proposal for research grants, uh, typically you need to nowadays include also some data management plan there. Uh, one often nowadays speaks about so-called uh, fair data, so findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable, and the idea is really that uh, you you try to describe the data so that it's for others, it's easier to find. Accessible, of course, means that you, you put that data available in some public place and that it has uh, a uh, well-defined format so that others can use that and so that it can be used also later on. And CSE has also various services related to this uh, uh, managing data in, in different parts of its, its life cycle. Uh, I already mentioned the uh, ALA storage, so that one can think for, that mainly meant for so-called uh, active data, so something that uh, is still sort of part of the ongoing research project. And uh, Alas as such, it's more like just a storage service where you can store data either from CSC supercomputers or from your university workstation or from your own, own laptop. And uh, uh, you get access to this uh, this ALA service uh, similarly than to the CC supercomputers. Uh, I mentioned uh, previously that uh, using the supercomputers as such is, is free for researchers in most cases. However, there is a concept called billing unit, so which you can th think of uh, CSC money or something like that. I mean, you need to apply for some compute resources and uh, the resources will grant will be granted in in units of billing units uh, you can find a calculator on our web pages how how these billing units actually go uh, important point here is that uh, storing the data in alas it also sort of consumes these these billing units so an idea of billing units is of course even though uh, using the storage or the supercomputers doesn't cost any money to the users. Of course, costs some money to CSC and, and ministry uh, to operate that. So aim is uh, try to motivate and make sure that the users are also using that efficiently. So you see, we have a yes. few more minutes before we need to go to the break. Okay, so, you know. so then I'll uh, try to speed up here a bit. So there are two basic uh, data management uh, services that you can access via CSC. One is sort of uh, more European-wide, uh, EU dat, uh, and the, there are a couple of different services. Uh, some of them are similar to, let's say, Dropbox or Google Drive and so on, but they can be also customized for needs. And then maybe, and these are good if you if you have an international usage, so you need to uh, share data between international collaborators. And then there are the sort of uh, more national services, the freedata.fi, uh, which uh, have various tools for storing the data, but also uh, providing metadata, describing the data you have there and also uh, tools for uh, searching for the data. Uh, these services you typically have to apply separately to get access there. And some of these services, they actually operate it via the local contact person at, the, at your university. Um, if you look into CSC, uh, user documentation, 
there is the sort of uh, data part here where you can find some a bit more information about about these kind of services and here in accounts you can also find a bit information about also these these data services um, and this is just a, a overview of the different components so EDA is the basic storage service Kuvain is for describing and etsin is for finding the data uh, briefly about the other support services. So CSC maintains quite a large collection of different scientific software. So once again, we can go to uh, docs and here applications, you can either look them in alphabetical order, but we have, you can look by disciplines. So biosciences, chemistry and so on, and also that uh, are they available in Mahti or Pufti. So Pufti has a larger collection of software and Mahti a bit smaller one, but you can find here that uh, which software are available in, in which machine. Um, you can get from CSC, you can get help also in how to use some of this software. Sometimes also in the planning states that if we have some idea that uh, which software might be most suitable for the project, of course, in many cases, the researchers themselves, they, they know the discipline well, but CSC has also some uh, expertise in this area. So many, many of the people who work, uh, they have a background uh, in science and uh, have been doing a PhD, uh, postdoc and so on, and have also information tools and methods. Uh, one service uh, where I'm particularly more involved is that uh, if you need help in improving your own software so that it would run uh, faster in our supercomputers or scale better in parallel and so on, we can provide help also in that. Uh, the main where you should ask for this service as well for other ones is the service desk at at csc.fi. Uh, we run a quite large amount of uh, training every year uh, related to different aspects of uh, using our supercomputers, doing parallel programming, sometimes also how to use uh, some particular scientific software and also for other services that CSC is, is providing. These are typically two or three day short courses uh, at the moment, mostly in online format in normal times, mostly at, at CSC. Prop up in future, we provide more also streaming possibilities for them. And uh, depending on bit course, they are either free of charge or have a small, typically uh, 40 to 50 euros per day fee. Most of the material for trainings we, we develop, they are available uh, via GitHub or in our training portal with some open source license. Okay, so how to actually get access to CSC services? Uh, in principle, if you have a Hakka user ID, as most of you have, you can just go to my.csc.fi and get the personal CSC account. So you cannot directly use your Hakka account, but with the Hakka account, you can get the CSC user account. Uh, in order to really get these billing units, uh, there are some sort of uh, prerequisites. So it's uh, not everybody can apply for billing units. So basically there needs to be a project and a project supervisor and supervisor typically uh, needs to have some experience. So basically it doesn't need to be professor. So postdoc level is typically enough. And the project supervisor can then add other people. In principle, any people that has this CSC user account can add to their project. So for uh, summer students, for example, uh, in principle, your uh, summer uh, assignment supervisor they apply for the resources, uh, services, billing units, and so on. And then they can just add you to the project. And after that, you can connect to CSC supercomputers and use the 
use the supercomputers if needed. Okay, and I promised uh, as a sort of uh, summarizing also that uh, when to use CSC services. Um, if you look the actual individual cores or GPUs at supercomputers, they are necessarily not that much different than what you have in your local laptop uh, and necessarily and definitely not different than what you have in the sort of more local clusters. For example, the individual CPU core in my own laptop is a bit faster than the one in Pufti. So the added value of course comes that uh, instead of using uh, four cores in my laptop, uh, I can use 400 uh, in Pufti. Also, it might be that there is some software that is available or it's it's easy to use via CSC supercomputers as that installed there. And of course, memory, uh, typically you have only a few gigs of memory in your uh, local system. Uh, in university cluster, in FGC high cluster, you might have actually also quite large amount of memory there, but in CSC, definitely there is at least this uh, 1.5 terabytes maximum can use. And when you really need to do large scale parallel computing, then you don't necessarily have enough local resources. Uh, I guess you will be playing around with the module system, with the Slurm patch system, in at least in Triton, um, during this course. And it's, as I said, it's very similar to what we have at, at CSC. So moving from, from Triton to, for example, CSC should be relatively easy. And as a final thing, still here are the main pointers. So the CSC main web page, there is some sort of bit more general information to researchers at research.csc.fi and then the sort of uh, main user documentation I already showed you. Um, with that, thanks you for thank for your attention and uh, I don't know do we have still some of the questions or do we have time for a couple of more questions? Yeah, I think most of the well the most interesting question is to me is is CSC services good for or are CSC services a good solution for long term data storage as in thirty years or more? Uh, CSC provides some really long-term preservation service. So there is this kind of service, it's not part of this normal, so there is typically a special agreement needed for that. And that really is uh, uh, long-term preservation service. And one aspect there is of course that the data formats and so on, I mean, they might be completely changing and these long-term preservation services uh, take care of that also. What we are actually missing at the moment is, uh, and that's basically because how uh, ministry sees our task is that uh, for this midterm, so something let's say between five and 10 years for that kind of storage, uh, we in principle, we don't have a service. So, uh, for example, Allah is meant to, in principle, a bit, bit shorter term service, uh, and as I said, this long term preservation that that that's then a bit more complex. So something like archive for ten years or so, that's something that we do not have at the moment. But if you go to this uh, fairydata.fi, you can find more information about also this uh, long term preservation. Great. So, um, yeah, and I guess you can continue reading the HackMD and answering, like following up any further questions there. Yeah, I can do that for a while. Yeah. There were a lot of questions about how's the cluster actually arranged, like what's a cluster, what's a node, how do I run my code on that? This is the kind of thing that we'll get into great detail on, on Tuesday and Wednesday. So if it's not clear right now, don't worry, like we're slowly getting up to that point and you will see it then. So with that said, I guess we will take a break now for 